Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Four chapters today, uh, Deuteronomy 24, 25, 26, and 27. Yesterday, uh, we looked at uh, unsolved murders, what to do with those, um, should they occur. We looked at marrying captive women, the rights of the firstborn. Uh, what happens if there is a rebellious son in the family? Now, we don't have any specific record of that, but uh, we see that these laws are made to serve as a warning um, as to what should happen. Uh, we also look at um, various laws, marriage violations, assembly, uh, uncleanliness. Uh, today, more on the law. Uh, also, first fruits, tithes, uh, Lord's commands, um, and then also uh, the altar and curses uh, from Mount Ebal. So we'll look at that. Uh, again, Deuteronomy 24, 25, 26, and 27. So chapter 24. <clears throat> if a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house, and if after she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man, and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house, or if he dies, then her first husband, who divorced her, is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. That would be detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Do not bring upon sin upon the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. If a man has recently married, he must not be sent to war or have any other duty laid on him. For one year, he is to be free to stay at home and bring happiness to the wife he has married. Do not take a pair of millstones, not even the upper one, as a security for a debt, because that would be taking a man's livelihood as security. If a man is caught kidnapping one of his brother Israelites and treats him as a slave or sells him, the kidnapper must die. You must purge the evil from among you. In cases of leprous diseases, be very careful to do exactly as the priests, who are Levites, instruct you. You must follow carefully what I have commanded them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam along the way, after you came out of Egypt. When you make a loan of any kind to your neighbor, do not go into his house to get what he is offering as a pledge. Stay outside and let the man to whom you are making the loan bring the pledge out to you. If the man is poor, do not go to his sleep. Do not go to sleep with his pledge in your possession. Return his cloak to him by sunset, so that he may sleep in it. Then he will thank you, and it will be regarded as a righteous act in the sight of the Lord your God. Do not take advantage of a hired man who is poor and needy. He, whether he is a brother Israelite or an alien living in one of your towns, pay him his wages each day before sunset, because he is poor and is counting on it. Otherwise, he may cry out to the Lord against you, and you will be guilty of sin. Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their fathers. Each is to die for his own sin. Do not deprive the alien or the fatherless of justice, or take the cloak of the widow as a pledge. Remember that as you were slaves in Egypt, that the Lord your God has redeemed you from there. That is why I command you to do this. When you are harvesting in your field, and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over to the vines again. Leave what remains for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. That is why I command you to do this. Chapter 25. When men have a dispute... They are to take it to court, and the judges will decide the case, acquitting the innocent and condemning the guilty. If the guilty man deserves to be beaten, the judge shall make him lie down and have him flogged in his presence with the number of lashes his crime deserves. But he must not give him more than forty lashes. If he is flogged more than that, your brother will be, de uh, will be degraded in your eyes. Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. If brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside the family. Her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother, so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. However, if a man does not want to marry his brother's wife, she shall go to the elders at the town gate and say, My husband's brother refuses to carry on his brother's name in Israel. 
he will not fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to me. Then the elders of his town shall summon him and talk to him. If, the, if he persists in saying, I do not want to marry her, his brother's widow shall go up to him in the presence of the elders, take off one of his sandals and spit in his face and say, this is what is done to the man who will not build up his brother's family line. That man's line shall be known in Israel as the family of the unsandled. If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Do not have two different weights in your bag, one heavy, one light. Do not have two different measures in your house, one large, one small. You must have accurate and honest weights and measures so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does these things, anyone who deals dishonestly. Remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt. When you were weary and worn out, they met you on your journey and cut off all who were lagging behind. They have no fear of God. When the Lord your God gives you rest from all the enemies around you in the land he is giving you to possess as an inheritance, you shall blot out the memory of Amalek under heaven. Do not forget. Chapter 26. When you have entered the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God has given you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in the office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land of the Lord swore to our forefathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Armenian, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord our, of our fathers. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. And you and the Levites and the aliens living among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. When you have finished setting aside a tenth of your produce in the third year, the year of the tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, the alien and the fatherless and the widow so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Then say to the Lord your God, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and have given it to the Levite, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all that you commanded. I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. I have not eaten any of the sacred portion while I was in mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor have I offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed the Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people Israel, and the land that you have given us as you promised on oath to our forefathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. Then the Lord your God commands you do this day to follow these decrees and laws. Carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared this day that the Lord is your God, and that you will walk in his ways, and that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws, and that you will obey him. And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will set you in praise, fame, and honor high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God as he promised. Chapter 27. Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, Keep all these commands that I give you today. When you have crossed the Jordan into the land the Lord your God is giving you, set up some large stones and coat them with plaster. Write on them all the words of the law when you have crossed over to enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. And when you have crossed the Jordan, set up these stones on Mount Ebal, as I command you today, and coat them with plaster. Build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. Do not use any iron tool upon them. Build the altar of the Lord your God with field stones, and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. Sacrifice fellowship offerings there, eating them and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord your God. And you shall write every, or you shall write very clearly all the words of this law on these stones you have set up. Then Moses and the priests, who are the Levites, said to all Israel, Be silent, O Israel, and listen. 
You have now become the people of the Lord your God. Obey the Lord your God and follow his commands and decrees that I give you today. On the same day, Moses commanded the people, When you have crossed the Jordan, these tribes shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, Benjamin. And these tribes shall stand on Mount Ebal to pronounce curses. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. The Levites shall recite to all the people of Israel in a loud voice, Cursed is the man who carves an image or casts an idol, a thing detestable to the Lord, the work of the craftsman's hands, and sets it up in secret. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who dishonors of his father for his mother. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who moves his neighbor's boundary stone. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who leads the blind astray on the road. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who withholds ju justice from the alien, the fatherless, or the widow. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who sleeps with his father's wife, for he dishonors his father's bed. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who has sexual relations with any animal. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who sleeps with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who sleeps with his mother-in-law. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who kills his neighbor secretly. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent person. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the man who does not uphold the words of this law by carrying them out. Then all the people shall say, Amen. So I like there we get how important it is on Mount Ebal that people are following the will and the word of God. So, so important. Uh, we also see that 26, 16. Uh, it's actually 16 through 19. The Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws carefully and observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared this day that the Lord your God to the Lord, or excuse me, that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in his ways and that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws and that you will obey him. And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will set you in praise, fame, and honor, high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he promised. So it's a fairly simple question there. Is this stuff that still applies today? I mean, I know this is Old Testament, but does this sound like what our lives should look like? The Lord God, your God, commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws and carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty definitive, right? That we recognize that we cannot have a perfect life and we are saved by grace. But that change in our hearts when the Holy Spirit enters our lives and when we are living for Christ, when we are being a living sacrifice for him, then what is that? what's that look like? Well, we should have a yearning, right? Um, if we truly are together with God, then we should have a yearning to do his will doesn't mean we're perfect, but that means that our lives should strive to do that and strive to look like that, just as God's people used to look as well. So again, we have a different, a different thing that we're looking to. We are looking to Jesus. Uh, they were looking to the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. So, But there's a lot that doesn't change in that. I think that's something that's important for us to recognize and very much worth praying about. Let's do it. God, I just thank you, as always, for your word, and that we can look to your word for truth. I thank you that we find hope and we find consistency within these words, Lord. Let us, let us see that what you demand of us, God, is that we, we follow your son and that we show our love through that obedience, just as you wanted the Israelites to be obedient, Lord, you want us to be obedient as well. Um, let that be our passion, is showing you our love through that obedience. And when we fail to not get down on ourselves, Lord, but to recognize that grace extends so much further than we could ever recognize. Once again, we thank you for the reason for that grace for your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. That is about all I have for you today. As always, know I appreciate you. And wife, appreciate you tons. Plan on seeing you tomorrow.
Have a good one.